Hey everybody, Josh the RV Nerd down here at Grand Design today, taking a look at the often imitated, never replicated, made by dedicated, hopefully not medicated individuals here, the 2910BH Imagine. This is a member of the full Imagine series. There's actually little, medium, and big. This is Papa Bear Imagine right here with the bigger vaulted ceiling and that awesome looking smexy nose cap. Um, and they kind of combined a couple of their very popular travel trailer concepts with some with a very popular private rear double over double bunkhouse. But the cool thing is it's got like a, a, a sliding privacy wall. So this is a model that looks and feels very large during the day because you've got, you can see visibly from the front to the back of the RV, but there is clarity and definition in like the living room and the kitchen versus the bathroom and the bedroom and the rear bunk room. Um, it is a, a very interesting model in that regard. It also has one of my favorite things, the junk in the trunk storage system. And um, it doesn't have a sink, but other than that, a really good camp kitchen riding on Goodyear tires. It's got a drop frame storage compartment up front with an enclosed docking center. Very similar to a fifth wheel. Imagines really incorporate a lot of fifth wheel features into these big full Papa Bear series right here. Uh, the uh, flooring is carpetless, ventless, very pet friendly, even has some cool little pet dishes and like a little removable silverware utensil drawer built right in under the fridge that if you want to pull that outside, like if you just want to use the pet dish as storage, uh, you can pull that out of there. If you want to use the, uh, the utensil organizer as storage or you want to take the utensils outside, it's very easy to do. Now I try to be fair, like this is a cool RV, but it does have a hard walk through middle bathroom. Now the interesting thing is that allows the manufacturer to give you a larger bathroom with less total length and less weight and thereby less cost as well, which is very cool. Um, it's very big and spacious. You can actually put on a pair of pants, but some people may not like the idea that the RV is cut off from bedroom to living room when that's in, in play. But remember you do have that second entry door, which may also help us a little bit on road mode later. We're going to show you all the good, the bad and everything in between that I can come up with. And I'd like to hear from you. What you like and what do you dislike and if you like how we show you everything in between hit that subscribe button if you're new with us and let's get going now if you're pretty familiar with grand designs lineup a lot of this is going to look eerily familiar to a 2800 imagine the living room and kitchen are nearly identical this has a different bathroom and different bunk arrangement that privatizes the rear bunks but uh as a result of the bunks and the rear bath in the 2800 kind of sharing space this one has a separate walk through middle bath so it's not that the bunks cause the rv to be longer it's just that the private uh bunks require the bathroom to be moved which makes this a little bit longer than a 2800 but if you like a 2800 and you want private bunks this is probably the most direct option to go for you they both have that nice vaulted ceiling you got the tcl roku tv if i'm being fair it's mounted a wee bit high um, I get that the idea is to give you a nice big cabinet right here because this is basically our pantry. But like if I sit down at the theater seat, and again, I like to be fair, I'm going to show you what's awesome and, and maybe not awesome in these videos. Unless you're reclining in the theater seat, it is Jeffrey Giraffe pie in the sky television watching time, kids. And uh, if the TV was downward angled a little bit, maybe that would help. I feel like they could put maybe some cabinets above, have a TV in the middle, some cabinets below, but then you would never have that one big chunk of cabinetry that I think you can point at and go, there it is, there's the pantry. So that's kind of the tricky thing with RV design. I've learned as I've, as I've you know, aged and gained experience over the years here. Um, no matter what a manufacturer does, someone's going to tell them they're wrong. So it's a matter of trying to decide which is the least wronger uh, way of going uh, about things. <laughs> now this, uh, any Imagine that starts with model number 28 or larger can have a second air conditioner optioned up in the bedroom. This 2910, uh, we will actually get to see it, assuming I remember to take a look at it. But this right here is one of the major calling cards of this floor plan. The fact that it has this uh, rear corner, but privatized but open double over double bunk arrangement with all kinds of breeze windows ventilation that's actually a small power vent fan so uh if the kids are hot boxing one another back here uh because they've been eating too many hot pockets or i heard somebody the other day made the comment they made homemade hot pockets i i never would have thought a hot pocket was going to be the standard to which people would would choose to try to uh, arise to in their culinary efforts. I am by no means Master Chef Gordon Ramsay over here. But uh, my point is, 
Could you at least have called it a calzone? I I, I don't know. <laughs> uh, the private bunk room, if you wanted to, you could throw a TV on the wall over there. We can get you a wall schematic if uh, by VIN number to, to see where the wall backer might exactly be located. And um, if you take a look at the right-hand side of your screen here, you can see where there's a... Uh, dedicated storage in the bunk room including that you know the top hanging chunk as well as quadruple drawers galore below that that is something i really like because anybody with kids knows that every kid occupies twice as much physical space with all their stuff as you do now that is heat massage theater i do believe um you have the option of going with a uh, a hide -a bed as desired so if you want max sleeping you could do that if you look a little bit closer, this does have uh, heat and massage, which is very cool. Uh, a lot of manufacturers, have noticed, have dropped off those extra nice little features. But it's the touches that I think Grand Design does so well. Like, instead of putting USB plugs inside of the theater seat where your thigh is going to bust them off, they put them up there. And they're recognizing that USB type C plugs are starting to become an important thing. Now that, if you look at it, you see the wraparound cushions in the back. It looks like a U-Dinette. It's what I'm going to call a pretend U-Dinette. It could kind of work like a U-Dinette, but the rear bench, I got a secret in the sauce on that one. Hang with me here. When we open everything up for storage in just a couple minutes, you're going to see why that is actually an extremely cool dining space right there. Very flexible in function. Now, kind of like you have the, uh, I'm sorry, uh, camera lurched right there. I, I backed my camera arm right into the bunks beside me as I was backing up because I don't have eyes in the back of my head. Although, boy, my mother sure did, man. Um, never mind all that, though. I think that's just a gift that moms have. Um, the uh, Again, this kitchen arrangement, imagine Grand Design uses this all over the place because it's just really effective. Uh, I do want to dive into everything in, in more detail, though. Let's actually start up inside that top cabinet right there. I threw the owner's manuals in to give you a size reference. Uh, down below that pivoting TV, if you want to make it face the dining, you can. Serious storage space down there. And I love that handy little shoe garage. But like I said, this is actually a fairly pet-friendly model with no vents in the floor. You got those cool little dishes, but you could take those out. Your silverware organizer you could take out or put somewhere else. 12-volt DC compressor fridge with the option of going with a gas electric two-way. And look at the location of the outlets in the kitchen. They're on an interior wall, which is hollow, so they can wire those things however they want to. And I really like that countertop extension. But again, the dining, the table's free-floating. So is the rear bench of the U-Dinette. It's actually a floating storage ottoman. And where I think that could be really cool is not only just for the fact that you could just pull it out of the way, you could kind of convert your dinette into something like a pack and play if desired. The other thing that I thought about is if instead of the feeder seat, if you do choose to go with the hide -a bed sleeper sofa, that floating ottoman actually may function as a pretty viable footrest over here for a hide -a bed which doesn't have a recline function. Do you, I'd be kind of curious about that. Would would that concept right there change your mind on theater versus hide bed I'm wondering if we shouldn't uh, order and build these differently. Um, personally, I would probably still stick with the theater seat. I don't mind a, a floating ottoman footrest. It is kind of nice, though, not to have one more thing in the middle of the way when you're kind of walking around the camper. Porcelain foot flush stool. Again, middle bathrooms like this are absolutely huge. And that is, by the way, what I mean uh, when I say elephant enema pocket storage. Because these um, linen towel cabinets here are so darn deep, you don't look like you're giving an elephant an enema when you try to reach all the way back in there. This is also interesting. They put a towel rod right on the sliding privacy door for the bathroom. Unconventional but effective, you know. I try to convince my wife that my methods are unconventional but effective. She is not yet uh, convinced, so they may need to be more effective uh, still. The vault in the ceiling gives me just enough headroom in that shower, by the way. And uh, the it's, it's, it's shallow, but that extension on the bathroom countertop right there, um, I have camped in an RV with a similar layout like this for a night or two before. I found that shockingly useful. I thought it was going to be just stupid waste of space, but being able to like line stuff up over here and then keep it out of the way while you're using the limited counter space over here, I actually really like that. And um, the uh, the neighbors, they did not like the window that I left uh, open over here while I was singing while I was in the shower. 
It also probably doesn't help that I did not close the blackout privacy shades the whole time, and now their kid needs many, many hours of therapy uh, after what they witnessed. Um, moving on. We're going to settle out of court on that, actually. No big deal. Now, with a walkthrough middle bathroom, if somebody's using the bathroom, you cut the camper off. That bedroom door, you do have to maybe go outside and walk around, but at least if you really, really need to, you can get over here. And when we go outside, you'll see that you can, uh, the entire awning covers both entry doors. So you could sneak in and out both doors and, and have real minimal, even rainy day exposure. That is a 60 by 80 True Queen, not the Shorty McShort pants bed system, which is a technical term, by the way. TV hookups in this bedroom are in a real goof stupid position, but there's no better place to do it, really. Um, other than maybe if they offered a ceiling mount. And speaking of ceiling mounts, up top here, you get a good look at that optional second air conditioner, which is available on this model here. Again, Imagines, whose model numbers start with 28 and up, have the ability to be built 50 amp with second air uh, prep. And, uh, you know, that's when you start wanting to get your second air conditioner involved. Now, you've got extremely symmetrical bedroom storage. Take a look at half of it up here and then obviously just double it. Uh, I, I love the double dresser drawers on both sides. You've got those headboard power pockets, which is great. And then down here below the bed, you also have um, like this sliding storage tray, which can allow for just an additional layer of storage, or you can get it out of the way if you have big stuff. Now, I have never personally closed the slide on this one. And I got a feeling when I'm going to do that in just a second, my prediction is we're going to cut the camper off and you're going to need the second entry door to the bedroom for uh, road mode nap and craptastic access. Yep, it sure do. Um, I hate being right sometimes. I was hoping I would be wrong about that. But what can we still access? Well, the kitchen is, other than the kitchen countertop extension, which has to fold down for the slide to close, that is readily accessible. Something I didn't think about until just now, though, and that's why I take the time to do this, you're going to also lose access to the bunks when the slide is closed. How So, you know, for a, a travel stayover, maybe this one isn't excellent. For a travel stop, uh, through the uh, living room kitchen door, you can get to your kitchen to grab a bite to eat. Through the bedroom door, you could get up here to maybe toss in some duffel bags. Or if the kid's like, hey, got to use the potty. Has anyone else, by the way, ever noticed how their kids always have to use the bathroom right after you pass the last rest stop for like a billion miles? Now, one of the first things I want to hit on out here is the idea of like what vehicle might it take to tow this thing around? Um, this one has a, a top end maximum GVW of just under 9,000 pounds. That starts to sound late model tow package, half ton towable. It does carry a decent length. So I do advise that the vehicle, the, 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 the what do I wanna say? Like the, the minimum vehicle I might recommend for this RV, my recommendations might change based on your region and your terrain and how far you plan to tow it and go with it. A lot of people don't think about that. They just look at the weight and go, okay, yeah, I can handle it. But if you're going to go up and down mountains, it's you're going to need, you know, probably three-quarter ton. If you're going to flat land over short distances, a heavy half could probably do the trick. Um, and if you notice here, very similar to a fifth wheel. Like I said, there's a lot of fifth wheel-ish features in here. I like that motion light there. Uh, like that drop frame storage compartment that we have right there. Very similar to the front end of a big old, say, like solitude fifth wheel. Uh, we've also got a single uh, sewer monster over here. It does have one stink pickle exhaust point, as it were. Uh, so basically just one sewer hookup is, uh, I suppose, the more layman's way of saying it. If we get away from the fancy pants, shiny shoes, technical terms. Uh, the baggage doors on this, like if you actually get your hands a hold of them, they've got some decent heft to them. What I like about that is the door tends to say square. Very important on a bigger baggage door that it does that so that it doesn't twist and shout and end up uh, not connecting with its seal points the way it's supposed to. Now, full Papa Bear Imagine that we're looking at here does have that awesome looking nose cap, but it also has with that drop frame an extended uh, stone guard. But if you notice, they also paint on, well not paint on, like a spray on bed liner. Uh, like a stone guard part of the way up the nose cap just to help make sure that painted nose cap stays looking good, which I think is a, a, a really good thing because, uh, as you know, you don't have to get ready if you stay ready. I, I'm pretty sure there's a couple of people going, 
uh, all over on that one right now, you know. Um, <laughs> just a, a better look at the storage without the docking center in the way. You see the... Uh, normally I don't jump abruptly like that. Apparently I bumped the record button and shut my... Re I don't... I lost like nine minutes of footage. I don't know when I did it, so I'm backing up a little bit here. Anyway... Um, the big power awning on this. And notice that it does clear both entry doors. Now, if it is a rainy day, more so the, the, the living room door than the bedroom door, you might get spritz in the face just a little bit. And I like to share good with bad with you. This floor plan, there's just not a whole lot of way around it because the opposite wall, the driver's side wall on the poop side of the RV, well, it is largely either like slides or store, like there's, there's not a boxy space to hide a furnace and a water heater is what I'm getting at. So as a result, this one does have the furnace and the water heater over here on the campsite. The furnace doesn't bother me so much because uh, if you're going to be camping a lot when you're running the furnace, you're probably spending a little bit less time outside. Now, I'm not saying it's 100%. I'm saying that there's a correlation there. But the water heater exhaust being over here on the campsite of the RV, I do recommend, especially this being a bunkhouse, potentially with littles running around, you may want to do something to help, um, you know, keep kids away from that. And maybe that's a deal breaker. Maybe that's a factor you never considered before. If that was something that was handy for you, something you never thought about, if you just appreciate the effort, just leave a little note to say, thanks, nerd, something like that in the comment section. Let me know we're doing a good job for you here. I want to give you those, those extra factors to consider where I can. Notice that there's even a center support in that awning. That is just a big honking awning right there. The entry door is anti-slam, so the wind uh, or the kids who just fling it open don't smash it into stuff. But I really like, it's just the extra touches where the space allows Grand Design includes that extra little uh, magnet hold back right there. It's just those little details, uh, those little touches, you know, that I think help separate these. I, 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 I've, I've had other manufacturers ask, you know, why do people just go crazy over, you know, the stuff that Grand Design's doing over there on those Imagines? And it's touches. It's just tiny little human details that somebody who camps sees. Like, it's obvious that the person who designs this spends time actually in an RV, not just designing them on paper. There's, there's truly a difference. And, of course, with the motion lighting over here, which you could turn off or on as you please, you do have the junk in the trunk storage system, but this is cool. Down here below, um, the, this is below the floor line. This is actually cut into the floor uh, between the I beam, uh, I beam, I beam frame rails. There we go, nailed it first try. Uh, you've got just that extra storage tub. Now it doesn't like pull out or anything like that. Uh, it's not like a hide a bed sofa that doesn't, it doesn't pull out. Hey, jokes. We got jokes today, guys. But um, my point here is especially handy if you've got a bunch of loose clutter stuff, kids stuff, and with bunks back here, you probably maybe do. Uh, getting you a look up top on the ceiling, giving you a look front side, giving you a look back side. It is nice that this has a fully walkable roof. It is really awesome that they give us a factory installed ladder to get there. An interesting thing, full Imagine and middle Imagine XLS have a 165 watt factory solar package. The little guys have a 200 watt. I suspect that is only transitional. I don't know when. I have a feeling at some point this brand is going to go to a 200 watt factory solar package standard. Now, here's a question I have for you. Would you be interested in any sort of inverter prep on this? And if so, what would you want it wired to? Now, usually I'd like to leave you links to like, if you wanna, if you kind of like this, be like, okay, but I wanna see what else might be out there. There's not a lot that is exactly like it. Like Freedom Express has the 294, um, uh, Heritage Glen Hyperlite Travel Trailers or Salem Hemisphere, same thing, have a, uh, they've got a 29XBHL. And I'll tell you what I'm gonna do, instead of me just rattling off RV alphabet soup, I'm going to leave you a link in the description where you can check those. You can also see if we have one of these in stock and you can check MSRP for anything that we have in stock, but Grand Design does not allow us to publish anything but. We play by the rules, that is, one of those, I'm sorry, but that's how it has to be in this case kind of situations. If we had our way, we'd be able just to publish our discounted sale price for you every day. Unfortunately, we can't. I can tell you we don't do hidden dealer fees, however. And if you appreciated how we go through this with you today, make sure you leave me a couple notes what you like and dislike. And uh, subscribe if you're new. Catch the next one the next time around. You can always just mute me if you're tired of hearing me talk. <laughs>
<laughs> my wife does not have that luxury. Until next time, take care, stay safe, have fun, and happy camping, everyone.